chicken in? Hi, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> After lunch, of oh, course. Um, I'm pleased to introduce here Sonia Macias, straight off of USC Marshall School of Business. Sonia Marcias, Macias was a certified Scrum Master and Product Owner Servant Leader with successful Agile Scrum transformations in the major entertainment studios, including Disney, Walt, Universal Studios, and Fox Sports Entertainment. This Scrum overview presentation will inspire you, your passion to run with Agile Scrum to achieve delivering faster working software delivery and gain competitive advantage. Here's a proud a USC alum, Sonia Macias. So Yay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, to further uh, introduce myself. So I also have an MBA, recently completed my MBA in March. And I've worked at, as you mentioned, in the global entertainment studios, and most recently with, um, with Fox Sports. And I've also been involved in the Scrum transformation at Disney, and then and now I'm also leading the Scrum transformation at Fox Sports. Okay, here's our agenda. So we'll cover Agile. What is Agile? The Agile values, the Agile 12 principles. Then we'll go into Scrum. Scrum's a framework of Agile. We'll talk about the Scrum team, the Scrum ceremonies, user stories, the product backlog, how you can get certified, the tools that's used in, um, in Scrum, Jira, and Confluence. Okay, so let me give you a little bit hi of history. So prior to 2001, software development wasn't working. Why wasn't working? There were long lead times from requirements, software uh, gathering requirements from the business to the time the business would get their software de uh, delivered. So when I talk about long lead times, uh, you could think of uh, 18 months just to gather requirements. By that time, the business had already changed, the, the business model, the economy had changed, and the requirements were no longer, no longer val valid. So what happened in 2001, a group of software development developers went out on a retreat and they came up with this light framework. It's iterative development, meaning we deliver software as we go and we give it to, to the business in working increments. So the key in uh, um, the response to change in Agile is frequent delivery of business value, what's important to the business. And also with that, we work with the business to get their feedback and to get also, as we all always know, the business has further requirements, further changes. So the development and the, and the team have to have an attitude of willingness to change. When I worked at one of the other uh, major studios, the CIO said, no more in-house development. There were too many failed projects. And as we see in the, in the cycle, we see that other uh, software companies such as Salesforce, they come in and then they, they take over, right? They gain competitive advantage where our internal software uh, could not deliver to the business. Okay, so again, Agile, it's a framework for software development and it's based on the manifesto. We'll go into more of the manifesto in the uh, next slide or so. And here are the values and principles. So we look at the, at the values on this side, on the left. So individuals and interactions, meaning that we collaborate with each other and there's a, a lot of, uh, of um, self-organizing teams. We deliver working software. We collaborate with our customer. We demo the product and get customer feedback. And we have a responsive, responsiveness to change. So if we look at the old way, you could think of waterfall. How many have worked in software development that use waterfall, right? There was processes and tools. PMO offices who, who would um, dictate having tons and tons of reams of, of documentation, right? A lot of requirements documentation. Also, when I, when I worked at uh, one of the music groups, music companies, 
uh, the business analyst would deliver document about 150 pages. When it got to the developer, did the developer read the documentation? No, right? Okay, right? So we're all on the, the same page with that, right? Negotiations and follow the plans, uh, follow that, that waterfall methodology, right? Which is, which is uh, very heavy. Okay, so let's go into some key concepts of the manifesto. So I'll focus on the, on the highly bold items. So again, early and continuous delivery of valuable software. And I'll t also talk about uh, our, our sprints, right? So we're, we're delivering to the business, right? What's of value to the business, the highest priority? Number two, we welcome change, changing requirements. And the, the key um, attribute for changing requirements is to gain competitive advantage cheaper faster better number three we deliver working software frequently and you could see in the sprint cycles we're delivering at the end of the end of the sprint to the to the business owner okay so number four the business and the developers they, the team they must work together together daily so to get that constant feedback, a lot of times the business analysts will, get, will have the requirements, but then when it gets to the developer, the developer has questions, so the business analyst goes back to the, to the, to the business to refine the requirements. Number five, <coughs> motivated individuals. Individuals have passion for agile, right? So if you're not on, on this train, right, what, what's management gonna say exactly? Get off the train basically bottom line right and one of the other thing is in your in your teams is trust to get the job done trust that your your developer your product owner your business analyst whoever's doing the work that they will actually commit to and will deliver so trust is a big key success to high performing teams Number six, the most efficient and effective way to work is face-to-face -face uh, conversation. So in my current uh, workplace, we use uh, also to communicate besides face-to-face, -face, we use uh, Slack, right? And, and the other company when I was at, at Warner Brothers, they also use Slack, but they also use Microsoft Teams. So also in face-to-face, uh, -face, we also work remote. How many people get to work remote, <coughs> right? So, so then we use a Zoom video meetings and, and that, type of, uh, that type of technology com conversa conversation. Okay, how do we measure our progress? <coughs> working software, right? And when we say working software, it could be small chunks of, of uh, software. It could be, okay, the business wants to add these filters in the Tableau dashboard. Right? The business wants to change the, the, uh, the drop-down values. The business wants to add a column of data. The business wants to summarize at the quarterly and at the deal level. Right? So it doesn't have to be huge amount of software, because right? whatever you can complete in the, in, the, in the sprint. And so we also, in the Agile, we promote sustainable development. <coughs> And number nine, technical excellence and good design enhances the agile process. Number 10, we're also called to be uh, simple. Number 11, a key component is to have self-organizing teams. So at, at uh, my, what we call it, our squad, our group works together. Our, our business analyst is in New York. Or we have offshore in India as well, and then we also have, have developers here at Playa Vista. So, but they all work together and they're all communicating and self-organizing. And they handle a lot of the blockers on their, on their own. Number 12, at regular intervals, the, the team reflects on how to become more effective. So what that means is, is in the scrum process, at the end of the sprint, the, the team provides their comments, their feedbacks, what went well, what we could do, do better, what didn't go so well. So there's constant feedback to improve. 
All right, so what is Scrum? So Scrum is one of the frameworks of Agile. <coughs> oh, SC or USC? No, Scrum. <laughs> okay, Scrum. <coughs> so the, t the team delivers in short cycles. So in Scrum, it's a sprint. So recently, at, at the company where I'm consulting, we went into one-week sprints. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Whew. When I worked at Disney, we transferred into from Waterfall into into Scrum, and we had two two week sprints. And sometimes when the when it was a little bit heavy duty, we we had three week sprints. But normally it was two week sprints. But again, <coughs> executives, management, stay competitive, deliver to the business because the business are saying you're not delivering, right? Competitive advantage, one week sprint. Fast feedback. So we were able, my team was able to deliver a set of re requirements for our Fox Sports Entertainment. And we got awesome uh, feedback from the SVPs of the business out in, out in New York. So what they said was they were using, you know, how everyone uses Excel and now they were able to have these awesome Tableau dashboards with all the data. So we got, we got uh, great feedback, so we're able to deliver their enhancements, and we started uh, 4th of July, so just, yeah, so July, August, yeah, so with, from July to, to last Friday, we were able to deliver those enhancements that the business wanted in those one-week sprints. <coughs> Continual improvement. And so again, we went from, um, so in the 4th of July, we started with the one week sp sprint. We saw that <coughs> what's called uh, story points, you know, the team was only able to do um, like 13 11, 13, 11 story points. We just finished the sprint <coughs> and the team accomplished 32.5 story points. So you see that how the team went, right? And that's that's the team that that's converted into the one week sprints. Okay, <coughs> um, uh, rapid adaption to change. As 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 I mentioned to you, we went through that one week sprint. So basically, again, it was either you know you're on that one week sprint or you're off. <coughs> okay, now let's look at the Scrum team, the product owner has the vision what does the business want right has the vision for for the product and communicates that to the team so the the team could understand what they're de they're developing the development team of course they build and then the scrum master is the coach for the for the whole team so let's go a little bit deeper dive into the product owner so the, the product owner maximizes the value of the product and manages the backlog. So in terms of what's the backlog, you could think of all the requirements that the business wants. So basically, you could think of the, of the list and then the business, the product owner prioritizes the list, the list of, the, of the requirements with the business and then says, for example, in, in August, we're going to deliver this set of enhancements, or in September, this is what we're going to de deliver. Okay, and so the development team, they do increments of what's, co what's considered done. In, in Scrum, you'll hear a lot of, of done and ready. So everything is, is it done yet? Is it done yet? When I was at, at, at Disney, we had, uh, one of the management person kept asking every day, is it done, is it, <laughs> is it, is it done? A little bit way, way overboard. But in, in Scrum, that's the term, right? We want to get to done. And again, I talked about the teams being self-organizing, where they, the team could talk among each other and resolve any, any blockers. Now the Scrum Master, so currently in my role at Fox Sports, I serve as a, consul I'm a consultant, but I'm a scrum master. So I'm a servant leader, and what I also do is I remove any blockers. The team will communicate on a daily basis if they have any, 
any blockers. And in this transformation that, <coughs> that we went through with the one week sprint, they were doing agile-ish, some were not uh, doing agile, some were, <coughs> but, but I helped the team to understand the scrum practice, rules and values and, and onboard new people, give them training, and just be, just be a coach. And also, you know, checking the stories complete, are the stories assigned points, and we'll get into that a little, little bit more. Okay, so let's look at this <coughs> diagram. This is a, uh, the, there's, in Scrum you have, it's called ceremonies. So you start with, a uh, actually, a, the monthly plan and the replan is not a formal uh, ceremony in, in Scrum, but that's how we operate at, at Fox Sports. So we plan what the work is going to be done by month at, at a high level and, and what the business values as the mo more uh, higher priority. We, I talked about the backlog. We have a product backlog which contains all the requirements that the business wants. <coughs> then we also go to sprint planning. So sprint planning is where the team looks at the stories so stories you could think of, requirements, right? And then the team will estimate the story, the team will understand the stories, and then we have the sprint backlog. So the, so the backlog of the story should be ready and done before it goes into a sprint. Any questions so far? Okay, all right, so here we have the the scrum team and that's the the in the sprint so as part of the sprint we have a daily stand-up how many are doing daily stand-ups yeah okay so it's called daily stand-up because for example at disney we would meet in a, a small conference room war room and we physically stood up so that's the ofi official name it's called daily stand-up here at fox uh, some people are driving in, some people call in, so, so it's not physically uh, uh, stand-up. So the way that I, I do it is then I show, uh, we have a, a Zoom WebEx type of uh, conference call, and then the, each, each um, team member will say what their progress is. So the daily, daily stand-up gives transparency. You know what your team members are working on and if there's any blockers. Okay. And at the end of the sprint, we have a demo, a demo to, the, um, to show the team what work you completed, what software you completed. And then the, the product owner will approve or reject the, the user story. And at that point, we're able to give, that, give the, the working software over to UAT over to the business to do UA, UAT, okay? We also have the sprint retro, where the team, team members say what didn't go so well, what went well, what actions we need to, we need to take. So as you can see, it's a, it's a cycle. Yes? Is grooming an official ceremony? Backlog grooming, that's a, a good question. No, it's not. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's not an official ceremony, but it's a standard practice that that you do. So we do it every week. So we do, um, so myself, the, the product owner, and the business analyst. So as a scrum master coach, I need to coach them because a lot of times, that's the, the biggest challenge, is the done and making sure that the stories are complete to go into the, to the sprint. So in the real world, many times you go into into the grooming and the stories are not not done and the key to success is to have your stories done and ready okay yes oh sorry any oh, yes um, can you review what the difference between product and sprint backlog so the product backlog would have everything right would have everything and then the sprint backlog would be the backlog that's going to go into for example like the next the next sprint and in addition, at, at where I'm at, Fox Sports, we also have an intake queue. So 
an intake queue where the business also puts in their, their, their requirements on their prioritize. So at, at Fox, basically my manager will say, okay, these are the next stories that you should be taking, taking in. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, what yes. What you just mentioned, the, uh -huh. uh, so the store is not ready. I use meaning the product spike is not clear. The any requirement on the product side is not ready. Is, is that what you mean when you mentioned the story? Oh, the story is not ready. Yes, exactly. So in, in our teams, we have the business analyst who's in New York. And so he works with the business to get the stories ready, right? And so in the, we were talking about in the backlog grooming, also referred to as backlog refinement, right? A lot of times we go into those, to those meetings and the stories are not ready. They'll just have like one little line and like, okay, where's the acceptance criteria? Where's the testing? Yeah, they're not ready. And you yes. mentioned you have business analysts. Yes. Owner in your team. Yes, There's we do. Okay, <laughs> yeah, so our business analysts is in New York, he works directly with the business. And the, you could think of the more detail, right? Getting the requirements at the detail level. So our product owner is here in Playa Vista. So the product owner is more the bigger, the bigger picture who knows, who knows the, the vision. So you could think of the business analyst as the more day-to-day -day working with the uh, with the business and then also communicating back and forth with the development team because a lot of times the development team will have questions right well this isn't clear so then go back to the business analyst you could think of the business analyst as the liaison right to the to the business and to the development team mm -hmm. oh one second yes Task. So we had a um, couple of sprints where we broke them into tasks, into in Jira, right? But normally we haven't broken them down into tasks. So basically, when we see that the story is too big, then it has to be broken, broken down into smaller stories so that we could complete in one week sprint. So as I mentioned to you, right, one week sprint is fast. It's so fast that. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, our, our SVP says, I knew the model was going to work. Of course, right? <laughs> or, like, or when I worked at Universal Studios, one of the SVPs, it's not going to take you very long, is it? <laughs> so, <laughs> of course, from executive, right? It's right? Competitive advantage. Yes? When it goes to UAT, yes. is that the end of the sprint or when it actually goes to production, is that the end? So in how do, you work with how do we UAT work it? When okay, that that's need to back in. exactly yes. We've had those conversations at, at our work. So we had uh, we had this uh, these from July to just last last Friday. We had stories UAT and our business analysts would go out with the to the business and do the UAT testing. So we had it as part of our, our sprint, and then Friday we deployed to production. So. That's so the end. At deployment, yes, yeah. In our in our scenario, we had deployment. It was just uh, just yesterday, yes. At the end of end of all of those uh, six weeks, actually, it was six weeks. Yes, yes. I know there's there's a little bit different schools of thought. Where okay, we're we're done here, and then okay, you go to UAT and different sprint. Yeah, but we did it. We did it as part of our as part of our sprints. So the, the other challenge. The practices can just be different from company to company. Or yes, that's, how, that's why, how I'm seeing it. We also had the challenge where, so since we went to one week sprint, the, some of the development wasn't going to be completed in a week. I mean, it was going to be completed a week, but it wouldn't have had enough time for the QA tester in that one week. So then we had to do the, the QA story in the following sprint. Because we, we the developers, well, I. I'm only going to finish. How could how could he test it? How could he do QA testing if the developer is just going to finish in that? So the QA testing for that particular story will go in the following sprint. Does it, does it ever make sense to go two weeks on that? 
instead of keeping it as a one-way state? So ask that question to the SVP. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah, but that's we're we're you know um, we're basically, yeah, e exactly, exactly. But we were you know told so that's to go a to. Product owner's discretion. Is that what they're saying? That uh, no, it says that the uh, yeah. EVP, EVP, uh, yeah, SVP level one week sprints. Okay. Question. Yes. Uh, so from an organizational structure, you guys include your QAs within your squads. It's not like a separate. Yes. Yes. Who decides on when, on the deadline? So, the, owner, the business. Okay. Yeah, so the if you say you need something next week, do you ever push back and say, no, we can't achieve that? Or how do you manage So, sometimes. So, <coughs> for example, right, the business says, says they, they need something, right? and. A lot of time we need to jump, jump and respond. But that's handled at the executive level, their negotiation. But of course, we need to support the business and the business timelines, right? Or else what? Salesforce will come in and take over, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Competitive advantage, yes. It sounds like a lot of decision timelines decided by the business team. The business, yes. Okay, so here in my current role, right, the product owner is within the technical team and manages also the development team. When I worked at a consultant at Disney, they br we did uh, training, scrum training also for the business and the product owner was from the business where we would demo to the, to the business. So that's... Yeah, and, and, and actually we're not there yet. We're just, you know, we're not there yet in terms of, of getting the product owners, uh, getting the business to be product owners. It sounds like your team includes uh, very diverse skill sets and, and kind of wide-reaching. How are the story points normally Okay, great question. So, so right, the development team estimates the story, the story points. Um, so with one week sprints, we could only go maximum like five story points, right? And so then sometimes we had to break down the story points into into smaller chunks. But they just you know, estimate, and then the way that you estimate on your next sprint, then you get better. Oh, well, that story was a three point. Now this story is going to be, oh, a two point or a four point, right? So you estimate, and you're following sprints based on experience from the prior sprint. So development team is working on sprint, which is one week. Then the QA team works on the following week. But then the next week, developer team is working on something else. It's something else, so right. So then the defect from the QA teams comes. So then how, how, how is that managed? Yeah, so we had scenario like that, right? Well, it's a QA, one person, not, not a whole <laughs> whole team of of Q, right, where, where those stories that were that were bigger, right? But then we also had stories that were smaller that, that the QA could complete within that same sprint. And then our QA person, um, yeah, left, and then now the role of QA is also being done by develop, developer. <coughs> okay. Okay, so let's talk about sprint planning, right? Yeah, right. Okay, so sprint planning, the team meets, right, to determine the work in the upcoming sprint. And then we also have monthly planning and replanning. We talked about the daily stand-up, which is gives transparency. So every day during the sprint, it's a 15-minute, it's time box. And the key, uh, key questions are, what did you do yesterday? What are you going to do today? And are there any blockers in your way? So it's very focused and it's only um, 15 minutes. If there's any conversations that go beyond these three questions, then it's uh, handled by the self-organized team. Okay, so then as at the end of the end of the sprint, we do a demo. So where the developer, whoever completed the story, will showcase what they developed. So we all meet in a room, we have face-to-face, -face, and then the product owner 
will accept or reject the story based on the acceptance criteria. Okay. We also have a, a retrospective mentioned, right? What worked well, what did not work well, what actions we can take to improve our process going forward. Okay, the key to success are the user stories. So user stories are a requirement for any functionality or feature. And in the Scrum, it has to be in this format. As a user role customer, I want to, what's the goal to be accomplished? So that I can, what's the reason for the goal? So here's an example. As an ad sales planner, I want to enter the deal number in the ad sales dashboard so that I can search the ad sales by deal number. So it gives the rest of the, of the team, the developer, the QA person, right, specific requirement on the functionality or feature to be developed. So the, again, the key to success is writing good user stories that are ready and done. Okay, another part of the user story is the acceptance criteria. So acceptance criteria, right, the feature, the function should satisfy and meet. So it's in this format, given some precondition. When I do some action, then I expect the result. When I open the ad sales dashboard and enter the deal number, then the ad sales by deal number displays. So again, when we're doing the demos, right, when the QA test person is testing, the, the QA tester knows what to look for. Of course, there's testing steps, but they'll also, also uh, know exactly <coughs> the specifics. Yes? Is that acceptance criteria developed while the stories are being developed? Yes. Yes, it's part of the story. Yes. Okay, and then we also estimate the story points. For example, with our one, one week sprint, right? One point is one day of work or less, or four points, four days of work or less. Okay, so one of the key tools we, uh, we use is Jira. So it's, Jira is the tool to create your stories, plan your stream, sprints, and distribute uh, tasks, right? So each, you can see each little box is a story. You, and it gives transparency. This is a Jira board. It shows uh, the columns to do in progress or, uh, or done. We also have uh, QA testing and done. So we can see where the story is. So the objective is as soon as you start uh, working on the story, the, the story is moved to the next to the next status. And the goal is to have all your stories done, right? Of course, by the, by the, end, of the end of the sprint. Uh, also, when I worked at, at uh, uh, Disney, we also used Rally, another tool for, for Scrum. OK, <coughs> Confluence is another, another tool that we use. It's a landing page, and it's highly integrated with Jira. So you could bring in these gadgets and to, and to give you a, a dashboard, an overview of your progress, right? Management wants to know, right? Is the, are the enhancements going to be completed? Okay, now certifications. So I highly encourage you to get certified as a Scrum practitioner. There's certified Scrum Master, certified Product Owner, certified Scrum Developer. So it's really easy. What you do is you take a training course, uh, an authorized vendor from Scrum Alliance. For example, for the, for the certified Scrum Master, the training is two days. At the end of those two days, you take a 30-question uh, open book test. And then in an hour, you get certified. That EC. Anyone have a PMP? OK, right? PMP, uh, six months to study, right? At least killer. Yeah, a killer, right? You have the questions like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I encourage you to be certified Scrum Masters. All right, and so here's some references. You could get a free uh, scrum, scrum Guide. You also could go to uh, Principles of Agile Manifesto and also how to write user story uh, testing. 
Okay, I'd like to thank you, Datacon organizers, sponsors. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Coming from a PMP background, this right. was very informative.